Good morning. We are a concise group this morning because obviously there's something bigger and better that's going on first thing today. But it actually doesn't start till 4 o'clock this afternoon, but that's okay. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yeah. Jane, can I get you to press my organ, please? Let's spend a moment or two quieting our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship the Lord. Please turn to number 400 in your blue hymnal, number 400. We're going to be singing verses 1, 2, 3, and 7. No, 1, 2, 3, and 7 of number 400. Please stand as you are able. Almighty 
God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 356, the Gloria. Together. Glory to God in our hearts, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly being, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are holy. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Messiah. To Jesus Christ, we are all the Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you. Mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's word. <laughs> Our first lesson has come from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, and in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, who trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the spring. They shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The psalm of point for today is Psalm 1. The psalm is found on page 585 in the Book of Common Prayer and in and your online bulletin. Let us read Psalm 1 responsibly. By whole verse, I will begin. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of scornful. Your delight is the law of the Lord, and they meditate on the law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like a shadow which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of righteousness. For the Lord knows the way of righteousness, the way of righteousness. Our second lesson comes from the first letter of the church in Corinth, chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal letters. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now if Christ is proclaimed and raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God. 
because we testify to God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who also have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are, of all people, most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are able to please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. According to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place with a great many of the crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of the people from all Judea, Jerusalem, from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They came to hear him to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with clean spirits, unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and he healed all of them. And he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. So woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you who all speak well of you, for that's what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Please pray with and for me. In the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. May only your words be spoken and your words heard. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Come on down. Now see. Now, I'm going to assume that at this stage in your school lives, you guys aren't doing many Valentine's Day parties at school, right? Have they given that stuff up yet? I mean, do they still do it in the elementary schools where they pass out the little Valentines and everybody gets them? Do you know the history of Valentine? Do you know where he came from? Kind of, kind of, sort of. Well, because it happened so long ago, there are a couple of different stories about who Valentine or Valentinus was. But popular rumor has it, and the most consistent stories say that he actually did exist, that he was either a priest or a bishop sometime in the third century AD. Most of them say that he was a guy who A, loved Jesus, and be recognized the value of husbands and wives being together. One version of the story said that he was called to the emperor to renounce Christ. And he decided that he could not renounce Christ, that he loved Jesus so much that he would rather die 
them to renounce him. And the emperor said, okay, die you shall. And killed him in a most Roman way. The other story is, is that he was a priest and the word came down from on high that uh, the soldiers couldn't be married. And the reason the soldiers couldn't be married is because it took their mind off of the duties at hand. But he knew that marriage was important and that love was important and that he secretly carried out marriages amongst the Roman soldiers. And when the emperor heard that, the emperor said, well, how can you defy me? And he says, well, because Christ tells us to love, and I love Christ, and I'm going to continue to do as he says. And the emperor decided to kill him in a most Roman way. In either case, it was love that he was upholding. It was love between two people, husbands and wives, that he was standing for. And in all cases, they say that he died on February 14th, sometime around the year 270, 269, 270. Right? So it is a day for us to remember love, but it's also a day for us to remember what the cost of love is. And the cost of love is not in flowers. And the cost of love is not in diamonds, and it's not in cars, and it's not in cards. Right? The cost of love is doing what is right before God with those whom you love. It is showing them what kind of sacrifice you are willing to make. Right? And I know you have us, you're suffering a great sacrifice because you've got a dog making you the face. And you're not running away. All right? Harper, come here. See, this is your bed. See, Harper, we love you so much that no, you're not going to lick me in the face. No, but you will follow me. But we made you a bed over here that he's not coming anywhere near. All right? On Valentine's Day, okay, when you are in love or when there's somebody that you care for, it's a day to show them sacrifice. It's a day to show them service. It's a day to show how important they are of you. And you can't buy that. You can only show that. And the easiest way and the best way to show that is let them see Jesus in you and through you and demonstrate his commitment of love. Does that make sense? Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, we thank you for Valentine. And we thank you for the image that he's left us of sacrificial love. Be with us this day, we pray. Showing our love to others as we have been loved. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes, I know. We all get up, and that means you too. Okay. <coughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Whoa. That was close. <laughs> yes. They loved me enough not to give up on me, even when my feet were giving up on me. Right? That could have been painful for all of us. On days like today, it strikes me that there are no coincidences, as I've said before, that the lectionary and the days that we are celebrating kind of line up. If you take a look at all of our lessons today, there is great blessings to be had, but there are also great curses to be endured if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, if we're not loving God above all, if we're not loving our neighbors as ourselves, there is going to be a cost to pay. We start off in Jeremiah, cursed are those who put their trust in mortals, who make mere flesh their strength, whose heart is turned away from the Lord. Ouch! Now, back in these days, when a curse was placed down, people took that as a fact of God. If you were being cursed by God, man, everybody got out the way. Because not only could you be hit, but everybody around you could be 
You've seen that, you know, somebody says something and everybody just kind of walks away and they start looking up, waiting for that lightning bolt to come down. Right? Yeah. I know some of y'all have done that. I've done it. People have walked away from me when I've said stuff like that. And they're thinking, uh oh, uh, Father Daniel, you in trouble now. Two things. One, the curses are real. And two, if God's going to take me out, y'all are safe. Unless he also wants to take you out, too. All right? So you can be standing right next to me. If that lightning bolt comes down, it's just after me. But I digress. Cursed are those who put their trust in the Lord. They will be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They will live in parched places in the wilderness on an uninhabited salt land. They will dry up. There will be no life left them in them at all because they have not done what God has called them to do. Now, Jeremiah is speaking to the ancient Israelites and to those who lived in the land of Israel and Judah and letting them know that they need to come back to the Lord and that if they don't do so, their life is really going to be painful. But he gives them the counter to it. He says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord. If you remember what God has done for you and believe that he can do it again and will do it again, if we humble ourselves before God, there is going to be a blessing. And as they believe the curses were real, they believe the blessings were real. Because they not only had they seen the curses, but they had also seen the blessings. They can remember back in time when God took care of their enemies for them. They can remember a time when God provided them in the desert where he fed three million people for 40 years. They knew that this was true. They knew that the blessings of God were real. They would be like a tree planted in the water sending out its roots into the stream. Any of y'all driven up and down the, the Rio Grande, if you've been up to the Bosque, right here in the middle of the high desert, there is a stream of green on either side of the river. There are trees that don't exist anyplace else, but right there on the banks. And the reason they live there is because their roots go down into the aquifer. They reach out towards the river, and when the river is running, they grow. And when they grow, they're really hard to eradicate. You cannot get rid of any of the trees along either side of the river. Anybody ever tried to dig up a mesquite tree, which is planted near a water source? It cannot be, in that right, Goober? You cannot kill a mesquite tree. Right? Because its roots go down. And it's a symbol of how God is growing that tree. How God's feeding that tree like a tree planted by a stream. When we dig our roots deep into God's word and into following God's law, we too will be like that tree. We will sprout greenery. We will sprout new life. We will share that, share that with other people. The leaves and the branches that we spread out will provide shade and comfort to all who come near. What a beautiful vision for a growing and going church community of God in this day and age. People are flocking to it because they know that they will be fed there. And we receive the blessings of it. Problem is, as Jeremiah continues, the heart is devious above all else. Devious hearts have gotten us into more trouble than just about anything else besides our tongues. And if we do not control the heart, if we do not surrender the heart so that it can be cleaned, if we do not allow the Holy Spirit to command our hearts, we can do more damage than anything else because it is out of the heart that the tongue speaks evil. It is out of the heart that the brain does evil. It is out of the heart that the hands do evil. And therefore, we open ourselves up to the curses that God has promised us. 
Now, for those who would be thinking, well, those curses and those blessings were just in the Old Testament. Oh, no. All we have to do is take a look at our gospel because there are blessings and curses in our gospel today. We like to think of Jesus as being all loving and all kind and all kinds of St. Valentine-ish. Amen. He's got be mine written all over him. And he starts off just like he does in our Matthew's versions of the Beatitudes. Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you who weep now. Blessed are you when people hate you and so on and so forth. He's giving us a picture of what our life will look like if we follow him. He says there's a good that's coming at the end of the day. But Luke adds some stuff to it. It's like he pulled a page from Jeremiah. This is woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are full. Woe to you who are laughing. Woe to this is the one that gets me. Woe to you when all speak well of you. For that's what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Um, I'm an okay preacher. I think I'm an okay preacher. Right? When I do what I'm supposed to be doing, I get out of the way and God speaks through me. Right? My wife will tell you in no uncertain terms, if it's a good sermon, I had nothing to do with it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, All right? But what gets me is I'm standing back there in the back and people come up to me shaking their hands and, you know, maybe they're just being polite. And when they say, that was a great sermon, Father David, that was a really good sermon. You were just the best preacher. Nobody does it any better than you. We want to have you forever. That scares me to death. <laughs> and the reason it scares me to death is, is it true? Is it sincere? Or am I living out, woe to you when all speak well of you, because that is what their ancestors did to the false prophet. And am I being a false prophet in that moment? So I have to check myself. To say, well, is it me? No, it can't be me, because I'm not that good a preacher. And that means that for once, I'm able to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit move in and through me and I can actually do what God has called me to do which is to spread the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the best way for me to do that is to love God above everything else. To love Jesus with everything that I've got. And to surrender daily to the Holy Spirit. So that it is not me people are seeing. That it is Christ who's living in me. And if it's Christ living in me and I can show that love, then the same blessings and the same life and the demonstration that Valentine's did, I can also do. But it is not me, it is Jesus who is living in me. It is not me, it is the Holy Spirit living and working through me. It is not me, it is God the Father who loves me. Amen. But not only loves me, but loves all of you as well. Anybody could use a blessing today? Mm -hmm. A couple of you. Any of y'all scared of the curses today? <laughs> well, there's one sure way of making sure that we reap the blessings and avoid the curses. And that's by daily declaring our love for, our surrender to, the God of love. Through his Son, our Savior Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Love God and believe that He raised His Son, our Savior, from the dead.
and you are willing to surrender to the Holy Spirit, I would ask you to turn to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer and stand and affirm, stand and pray, stand and declare what we as the body of Christ believe as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. My brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, true God from not man. All the one be the Father. And through him all things are made. For us to work our salvation, we came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became an heart from the Christian Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and the lost side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he was again in the accordance of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to death, the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. The prayers of the people for the Epiphany season are form three and are found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all be one mind. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Michael Hunt, and Jerry Lamb, our bishops, and Daniel and Scott, our priests, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, and Greg and Michelle, our governors, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our hard works be like the labor of society. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. This morning we pray for Sandy, Paul, Michael, Bishop Michael Lee, Johnny D, Rick, Bob. Robert, Jackie, Samuel, the Taylor family, Hannah R, Diane, Bertha, and Reverend John Palmer. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, we pray for Our Lady of the Valley, Hispanic Ministries, and the ministry to the displaced in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We pray for our military, both home and abroad. We pray for all law enforcement, firefighters, first responders, healthcare professionals, and educators. Give to the departed eternal rest. The light, 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 light. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share your Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Please add your own intercessions petitions of thanksgiving before the Lord, either silently or aloud. Thank you. 
360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. because we have been separated for far too long. We are going to have our next main gathering. It is going to be, uh, well, we've got Ash Wednesday, but after Ash Wednesday, we have St. Patrick's Day. And we're going to have traditional Irish food on St. Patrick's Day, which is not corned beef and cabbage. Surprisingly enough, that's an American Irish dish. We're going back to the old country. And we've got a couple of things that we've got planned. We discussed them last night. So make your plans to be here the Saturday before St. Patrick's Day, which I think is like the 12th of March. We're going to do it before because St. Patrick's Day is on a Thursday, and that is our Bible study, and the Bible study trumps everything else. So we're going to move St. Patrick's Day. We're going to get into the partying spirit early. So I think it's the 12th. It is the 12th, and okay, we're going to do it at 6 o'clock. So put it on your calendar so you do not forget, okay? I've had a couple of people come up and go, wow, I forgot about last night. It's like, really? So put it on your calendars. Um, we will be having a Shrove Tuesday pancake dinner here, which is the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, which I think is first. 
it's the first of March. It's March 1st, so we're going to have a party then, and we're going to have to get your ash in here on Wednesday. Right? We'll have drive-by ashes, and we're always looking for people to come and help distribute ashes to the line of cars that we have showing up here year after year between 7 a.m. and uh, noon on Ash Wednesday morning. Then we will have a noon service, and then we have a 6.30 service, I believe is what we've done. Right? Noon and 6. All right? But it's amazing. Year after year, people who are coming by to get their ashes in our parking lot on their way to work. We've had folks who say, yes, this is the only time I can get it done, and so they're looking for us. So to come and experience that uh, in English and Spanish. English and Spanish. So if you are if you are conversant in Spanish, we need you. Otherwise, Lorenzo spends a whole lot of time out there freezing <laughs> and talking. He needs all the help he can get. Um, we need to pray that this current wave that we appear to be on the downhill side continues because if it does then we will be able to do our Good Friday uh, pilgrimage up uh, Mount St. Cristo Ray. They've canceled it for the last couple of years. We're kind of hoping that they'll get it together so we can go this year. If not, then we will do it here on our property and we'll have the stations of the cross set up around here anyway. Um, Birthdays and anniversaries. Tori. 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 Tori's got a birthday. She's like what, twenty now? Oh, she's with a what? <laughs> she's with a who? Boyfriend? You are allowing this? She's twenty. She is, she is twenty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so so Tori's turning twenty. Yeah. Alright, my sister is celebrating her birthday on Valentine's Day. And somebody was pointing this way down here in front. What was that all about there? Sandra, were you busting out Goober who's celebrating a birthday? Yeah, come on down here, old man. <laughs> Uh, Sandra, he doesn't stand up here by himself. <laughs> we know better than that, amen? <laughs> All right. Who are you? I'm Goober Gordon. Everybody say hi, Goober. Hi, Goober. <laughs> don't want to ask, could you? <laughs> there are so many questions that I don't want to ask. <laughs> But I do want to know, which one are we celebrating today? 79. 79 years old, come on, come on. And in your case, it's not the years, it's the mileage. Eh? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray for them. The gardeners' families are on the founding books for this church. And, and Goober knows because he was a teenager when that took place. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, how do we give you thanks for this long time follower of yours? We thank you for his presence here among us. We thank you for the work that he has done, for the work that he does do. We thank you for the wisdom and the stories that he does tell all of which surrounded by and infused with your love and care. I pray that you will continuously pour out your blessings on him, that you give him the wisdom to do what 79-year-old men should and should not be doing. And climbing up on a roof on a barn is top of that list. Amen? It has to be done. Heavenly <laughs> Father, we thank you for his love. We thank you that you love him. And ask that you continuously bless him. This day and all. Strengthen Sandra as she cares and tries to control him. And give her an extra measure of your strength and peace. This day and always we pray in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> hey, I'm praying for you. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation?
my brothers and sisters. Oh, there is a vestry meeting afterwards, and if you're online and you would like to join the vestry meeting, we will be sending out a Zoom link that you need to let us know. Let me know. Uh, just get the information to us. Put it in the Facebook chat if you want to uh, be sent out the link for the, uh, for the Zoom meeting, uh, because we're going to be discussing a whole bunch of really important things this time around, but we're going to do it in a succinct fashion so we can, like I say, get on with the rest of our day. Brothers and sisters, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 365. Let us pray. Together, eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have blessed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Since it is now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.